I decided to do a video about pigments because it's a frequently asked artist question. And the reason it's a frequently asked artist question is because I get asked about this all the time, even from people that don't know who I am. They're like, hey, tell me about pigments. And I'm like, that's really weird, waiter. Pigment is a material that will change the color of reflected or transmitted light. So anything that you see around you, right? You're not, it's not actually blue. It's not actually turquoise. What it's doing is there are materials surrounding that or made up of that, that are choosing which light it reflects back into your eye. And that gives you the perception of all these different colors of the rainbow. Okay. That is kind of how these pigments work. What do they actually look like? Well, who knows? I mean, we'll, we'll have to get that sixth sense going to find out. We'll find out through love. That was the sixth sense, right? Well, dead people? No. No, the fifth element? What was the fifth? The fifth element was love. Too many Bruce Willis movies. Oh my <laughs> gosh. These are just some examples of pre-packaged pigments. And, you know, when I initially thought about doing this just introductory video, because <laughs> we gonna break this into sections. This is going to be a series. Because when I thought about all the things that were going to go into this video, Ashley was going to kill herself editing it. And I don't want that. I want her to be around for a long time and be happy. I want you to be happy. So, with that being said, we're going to break this series down into little bite-sized chunks. And this just introductory video is going to talk about what are pigments. What I was initially going to do was going to open this up, put some out so we can see pigments together. But um, last time I did that, it was a hot mess. So when we talk about the world of art supplies, okay, we put pigments into vehicles, binders, to allow them to be dispersed in various methods. You know, you add, you add pigment to linseed oil and usually a little bit of extra, I don't know, wax or clay, there, there's certain things. To make oil paint, you add uh, gum arabic and glycerin to make watercolor, you can add alcohol to make a pigment-based marker, you can make acrylic with acrylic polymer. And we're gonna talk about a lot of those different things and how and how these pigments are used and how you can better understand them to make your art better. I'm trying to improve people's lives through art. A pigment is not a dye. Pigments go into a suspension. Dyes are a solution. And the basic difference is a chemical reaction versus a physical reaction. Like you're giving me right now. It's getting a little hot in here. Because she's going to hit me in the face. Okay. When you have a chemical reaction, it's sort of like mixing... Uh, it, it's like salt water, right? So when you, you know, want to mix salt water, you put salt in the water and you stir it, and you've got these little particles suspended in the water, but if you leave it alone, the salt will settle. There is no chemical change. It's called salt water because it hasn't turned into something else. Now, if you were to mix sugar with water, right, the sugar will what? Dissolve, exactly, and it becomes bad for you. That's all I know. It's sugar, water, soda, it's, you know, bad. I, I like it. And that is a chemical reaction, okay? Now, to make that chemical physical reaction easier, I'm going to digress to eighth grade because I thought this was just the simplest analogy. We're getting really sciencey. I love it because that gives me a chance to put A S S up here. Did I do that the right way? Or is it A S? No, I did it the right way. A S S Artist Science Standards. Artist Science Standards. I'm so clever. Somebody already came up with it. So, what was I talking about? Okay, here we go. Physical reaction versus chemical reaction. Look at a piece of just paper, right? piece of notebook paper. If you were to, why can't we do this? Why do we have to say like, look at paper and just make them like, we have paper around here, right? I just need a piece of paper, Olivia. Not expensive paper. Not that paper. That, yeah, that. That might be Tracy. Oh, that's Tracy. That's not good. Oh, I don't want to ruin that. Oh, this one. This one. Okay. Does anybody have a lighter? Yeah, you're good at that. While we're waiting for Olivia, I'm going to show you a physical change. Okay. If I was to take this sheet of paper and crumple it, into a ball. What is it? What would you call this? A ball of paper, but it's still paper. It's still paper. If I undo the paper, even though it's wrinkled and not exactly the same, it's gone through a physical change. It's still paper. All right, what do we have now? Probably a safety hazard. Um, what we have now is a chemical reaction. As this paper burns, you ain't gonna get paper back, okay? A paperback. Look at that. You are going to get burnt. Well, actually, you know what we're getting? We're, well, ash. And ash is... We're getting art supplies. With just a piece of paper and a lighter, you can make art. Because oh, wait, this will turn into charcoal. You just went out. What do you mean I just went out? Well, 
If we're getting any audio in there, this is B-roll of it burning a chemical reaction. It's apparently our own. It, I think it's on. It says power. It, the light's green. The trap queen. How did you get? This is in my pants. How did you? Can you take it off? Oh, okay. Weird. I don't like it when people are in my pants and I can't tell. Okay. Well, this is slowly turning into a problem, actually. Uh. <laughs> so chemical reaction. Okay, we need it. We need to seriously dump water on it. Put, okay. it, in, put it in the bucket this now. Is... Oh! oh! <laughs> this was my worst idea yet. So now, when I take... This is a failed science experiment. If we were to take this ash, the point I was trying to make was you can take that ash, and that's charcoal. With a single piece of paper and a lighter, you can make a hot mess. But you can also make art supplies. Get the fire extinguisher. <laughs> you can also make art supplies because charcoal is an art supply, right? I mean, isn't that? Yeah. These are my watercolors from home. Look what I've done. Oh, okay. So let's clean up and we'll come right back, right? In closing on that point, a chemical change means you do not get the paper back. It has changed completely its chemical composition on the molecular level. On the molecular level, it has changed, okay? You cannot glue it back together. It is never going to be paper again, even if you did glue it back together. What makes an artist pigment different than any pigment? Because there are so many pigments out there, but it takes a certain quality pigment to be an artist quality pigment. And those pigments that are fugitive cannot be used for artist paint or are generally not used for artist paint. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to be fugitive? Well, there's the Harrison Ford definition. You know, you're escaping the law. But in art, Fugitive means not light fast, okay? It means that those are pigments that are not going to maintain the test of time under light and pressure and heat and all the different elements. They'll start to gray and dull. A light fast pigment has shown it's strong, like bull, and it will stay bright and beautiful uh, for, I don't know, at least 500,000 years. We'll see. We still have some really great paintings from the Renaissance. Pigments can be made from anything from natural, reoccurring things in the world, you know, some of those cave paintings were done with bugs and berries, right? Plant fibers, seeds, uh, natural sources, but they can also be, oh, rocks, I should say, you know, like, you know, all those earth tones, you know, they can be natural, broken down things from real life. And then they can also be synthetic, okay? A lot of the newer pigments out there are synthetic. That does not mean that they are not good quality. In fact, if you look at, um, like, I think I made this point in a previous video, like, lapis lazulu uh, was, was, is a natural, occurring rock okay that's a real thing and that was used uh, for many years now science came out with ultramarine blue which was proven to be a better more transparent uh, blue to use so even though it might be more expensive if you see that lapis paint and it is very luxurious you know it's uh, this is with lapis the synthetic pigments are not lower quality they have found ways to make a better reaction for the paint all of these different things these rocks these chemical reactions, these chunks, are ground down into finely milled um, pigments as we kind of imagine them in our heads. You know, when you go to um, paint factories, I've been to quite a few, <laughs> they have these giant bins and barrels of different kind of pigments. It's, it's like a color factory. Well, it's exactly what it is, but it's, it's really fun because, you know, when they open up the top, they don't usually open them up all at once, but uh, when we're filming, sometimes they want us to, and it's like, you know, hey, look at that, we've mixed the pigments. But, you know, basically like what you see here, this is probably out of order from before because we had a fire. What you see here, you know, is probably what you think about with a pigment. There's a lot of things to talk about with pigments, okay? You got to talk about tinting versus uh, staining. You know, I think that that's something that might come up, you might be concerned about or confused about. We got to talk about loads. Loads are very important. I think that that's something that comes up frequently. People want to hear about loads. Uh, I think that we should talk about safety around pigments because some are not safe. We're going we're gonna to talk about safety. We're going to talk about transparency and opacity. And we're going to talk about some mixing practices and things that you should keep in mind. And we'll cover, try to cover all of our bases. If you have any questions about pigments, please put them below. And they might inspire me because we haven't filmed anything yet. We're just getting started. Uh, and we'll continue to film this probably until next year. Uh, unless you're just seeing this next year, uh, because, um, because we'll be filming this for a while, this series. Maybe that'll inspire me to add another one to the series, or I can answer in one of the existing ones already. Or if I'm feeling like I can just answer you below, maybe I will, I'll do there. Please stay tuned for more pigment talk, stay tuned for more paint, and stay tuned for me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry, where I am continually turning people on to art.
and we'll see you uh, for our part two, which I don't know what it'll be. I, I guess we can change the orders, but if I'm still wearing this shirt, it means we filmed again after this. So that will be the next one. So enjoy. If I'm not wearing this shirt, I ran out of energy and caffeine and meds and um, you got me sick. I don't even know how this thing works. This looks like it's affecting. But this is holding the pin in. So to to squeeze this, you have to pull this. But this is keeping you from pulling it. So That's not smart. Oh, Mazel Tov! Okay, well now we're now safe. We're <laughs> so you just remove this pin, which I won't do. Okay. Oh, the pin came out. All right, now I gotta. Don't all right.